In the grand scheme of things, we're still in the infancy of the information age. But what makes tech especially interesting for many is that it's peppered with anecdotes and fun facts that add substance to a story that makes them even more compelling. This is David from TechSpot, and here are some of our favorite fun tech facts that you might not have known about. The computer bug was named after a literal bug found in a computer. In 1947, computer pioneer Grace Hopper found herself working on a Mark II computer at Harvard University. It was at this time that her associates discovered a moth had gotten trapped in one of the computer's relays and was causing an error. The operators removed the moth and taped it in their logbook, identifying it as the first actual case of a bug being found. Word got out that the team had debugged the computer, hence leading to the phrases used in computing and pop culture. Hopper readily admitted that she was not there when the incident occurred, but that didn't stop her from becoming one of her favorite stories. For those interested, the offending moth's remains, along with the original logbook, can be seen at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. And while this is a modern use case of finding a computer bug, the original use of the word dates further back in time to Thomas Edison, who in an 1878 letter used the term bug to refer to a technological glitch. While he worked on the quadruplex telegraph, he said it needed a bug trap to function properly. The creator of Bitcoin remains a mystery. Bitcoin, the decentralized digital currency that has topped financial and tech headlines for years, launched in early 2009. The first known commercial transaction took place the following year when programmer Laszlo Hanyets paid 10,000 Bitcoins for two pizzas. In the more than 10 years that have since elapsed, Bitcoin's value has gone from practically nothing to well over $50,000 per coin with enough peaks and valleys to give even the world's scariest roller coaster a run for its money. Yet remarkably, through it all, the cryptocurrency's creator has remained anonymous. There are plenty of theories about Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonym used by the person or persons that created Bitcoin. Some have even gone to great lengths to uncover Nakamoto's identity, but as it stands today, there is no definitive proof in the public domain pointing to the creator's identity. We may never know who actually created Bitcoin, and perhaps that's not a bad thing. CarMax was founded by the now defunct Circuit City. CarMax is the largest used car retailer in the US and ranked one of the best places to work in the country. Some may be surprised to learn that the Fortune 500 company has been around for nearly three decades. But perhaps even more fascinating is the corporate entity behind the dealership. American consumer electronics retailer Circuit City hired a consultant in the early 1990s to help them evaluate possible business opportunities outside of consumer electronics. One idea in particular, an automotive retailer, caught the attention of then-CEO Richard L. Sharp. The concept was developed under the codename Project X for nearly a year before the first CarMax store opened 1.7 miles from Circuit City's corporate offices in Richmond, Virginia. CarMax was spun out of Circuit City in late 2002. Today, it has a market cap of over $18 billion, while Circuit City filed for bankruptcy in 2008. Sharp, the former Circuit City CEO that spearheaded the CarMax project, later went on to become a founding investor and board member of footwear company Crocs before his death in 2014. Some AMD processors could be unlocked for overclocking using a pencil. AMD found itself in a peculiar position in the early 2000s. The company's first-gen Athlon CPUs were dominating rival Pentium processors and along the way developed quite the reputation among overclockers. They were so good, in fact, that unscrupulous resellers would take slower chips, overclock them, and sell them for a premium to unsuspecting consumers. While not unique to AMD, the issue of remarking CPUs became such a problem that the chipmaker addressed it by physically altering its second-gen Athlon processors to prevent multiplier manipulation. It didn't take long before enterprising enthusiasts realized that bridging the gap between the cut L1 bridges on the processor could enable multiplier adjustments. The apparatus of choice for many was a basic pencil, as the graphite was conductive enough to get the job done. But others opted for a more proven tool like conductive pins. The process wasn't for the faint of heart, considering one false move could render your CPU useless. Ask us how we know. Super Mario Bros. 2 in the US is vastly different from Nintendo's original. 
the video game industry in the US was in dire straits in the early 1980s. Fresh off the video game crash of 1983, the outlook wasn't very promising. But Nintendo forever changed that trajectory with the launch of the NES and flagship game Super Mario Bros. a few years later. Japan was a bit ahead of the curve, having launched the family computer, the Japanese version of the NES, years prior. Locals were clamoring for a Mario sequel, and Nintendo delivered in 1986. When Nintendo of America got its hands on the title, however, they found its high level of difficulty to be off-putting. Leery of agitating consumers they just won back, consultant Howard Phillips insisted on a more player-friendly version for the West. Rather than starting a new project from scratch, Nintendo simply took an existing title for the Famicom and converted it into a Mario game. With a few alterations, Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic became Super Mario Bros. 2 and shipped internationally in October 1988. It was so successful that Nintendo ultimately brought it back to Japan a few years later as Super Mario USA. The original Super Mario Bros. 2 that came out in Japan eventually found its way stateside as part of the Super Mario All-Stars compilation for the SNES in 1993 as The Lost Levels. Apple's first logo is not what you think. Apple's logo, the one depicting a literal apple with a bite taken out of it, is among the most recognizable in the US. It was created by graphic designer Rob Genoff in 1977 and has persisted in a variety of iterations ever since. But did you know that it wasn't the first logo used by the company? Ronald Wayne, who co-founded Apple Computer alongside Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, designed the company's first logo. The black and white sketch illustrates Sir Isaac Newton sitting under an apple tree, complete with a quote from an English poet that reads, Newton, a mind forever voyaging through strange seas of thought, alone. Jobs, however, wasn't fully satisfied with the logo and wanted something that would be easier to reproduce in a small size. He also reportedly wanted the company name and logo to be fused as one. In early 1977, he commissioned marketing firm Regis McKenna, and specifically Janoff, to design a new logo. In April of the same year, the now iconic Rainbow Apple logo made its debut alongside the Apple II computer. Redbox kiosks were conceived by McDonald's. Redbox was a force to be reckoned with in the late 2000s and early 2010s. The video rental kiosk played a significant role in pushing Blockbuster into bankruptcy, and Netflix's future with streaming was far from a guarantee. By the end of 2012, there were more than 42,000 video rental kiosks in operation across the US and Canada, serving up nearly 2 million rentals daily. Redbox even ranked number 15 on the Fortune's list of fastest growing companies in 2012. But did you know that Redbox was created by McDonald's? In 2002, the McDonald's business development arm realized that consumers preferred to interact with the machine for some transactions. McDonald's used the kiosks to sell convenience store products, but the project was short-lived. The company still thought the machines had potential and started testing them as DVD rental kiosks. The concept took off, and in 2005, Coinstar bought 47% of the spun-off company for $32 million. In 2009, it scooped up the remainder of the company for over $169 million. This is just part one of our favorite fun tech facts that you might not have known about. To be notified when part two comes out, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. For more tech, gaming, and analysis, head on over to techspot.com.